Do you have any favorite thinkers that were kind of inspirations for Toe or for, for wanting to get into well, this? Or Donald Hoffman was the reason the Theories of Everything channel started because he was being interviewed and is still interviewed on platforms where they just ask him about the same questions over and over. Mm. And then it comes down to like two statements. Mm. Oh, look how foolish materialism is. And mm. it's just like diatribes against mm. materialism, yeah. which is most of the consciousness podcasts or most of the consciousness explanations and, and videos that I see, that I see personally. And for me, that gets tiring after the first two, let mm -hmm. alone for the 200th. Right. And then the second one is, he says, space time is doomed. I'm like, okay, come on, Donald. Like, <laughs> is, there, is there any... I, remember I said this joke that I love Donald Hoffman because he's constantly saying new things. And by new things, I mean, he finds 50 different ways of saying space time is doomed. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm thinking, okay, given that he's predicating all this in the papers, which are math based, uh -huh. why is no one asking him about the math? I can go through that. That's yeah. my background. Yeah. So let me read the PDFs and then ask him about that. Yeah. Of what the heck does it mean that this set is consciousness or uh -huh. this this Markov chain, one of these is a conscious experience? What does that mean? Uh -huh. Why do, does that necessarily translate over to how we work evolutionarily or a perception? And does that also give rise to quantum mechanics, like he says? Mm. So I had all these questions and I can look through. And then I interviewed him fairly technically. And people seem to, to that seemed to take off. And so I was like, wow, this is banging on all cylinders because I've always been interested in theories of everything yeah. since I was, since I, I learned about them. And I like puzzles and math. And then I went into filmmaking. But now I'm like, okay, I can use filmmaking, meaning it's like video. Mm -hmm. And I can use these, these analytical skills that I have, yeah. or at least proclivities that I have. And it's like in the domain that I absolutely love. Yes. Oh my gosh. And I wouldn't say Donald is a favorite thinker of mine, but yeah. he's responsible for the channel. That's super up. cool. Yeah. I, well, I, I'd love to actually get a little deeper into his stuff because I intuitively, I sort of think that physics is more the interface between biology and like the inanimate world or something uh -huh. than most hardcore physicists would like admit. Uh -huh. That would be my bias. Uh -huh. And so, I've been fascinated and I'm sort of like a fan of Plato and I think we see shadow play at the end of the day, but that's also kind of an intuitive gestalt feel yeah, on my yeah. part. So I didn't realize, he, so he's fairly technical. Like he, he, he will sort of technically back up this, this theory. Yeah, him and his co-authors, one is named, oh, I believe Shatar, Shatar or Shakar. Anyway, he, he's a mathematician, that co-author. Mm -hmm. And Donald is knows way more math than he should for a computer si or for a cognitive scientist. Uh, so Donald actually has the chops that he's saying cool. much more than people can think much more than, sorry, much more than most people know. Uh huh. Interesting. Yeah. I, I, I want to go through his, sure. his stuff. Do you think Salvatore Pius, if, 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 as yeah. my favorite guest, he would be one of my favorite guests. Okay. Interesting. So w do you think after having interviewed Pius once or twice, twice now, twice, twice. Yeah. Do you think that these Navy patents are legit? I reserve judgment. And so I, I don't even think in terms of that. Mm -hmm. So that would be a question that I would think for like 20 seconds to say, I don't know. So I'm trying to sure. not do that right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think he's, after having spoken to him, do you think he's, I mean, it sounds like you do think he's I think a rigorous he's, thinker. I, oh he's yeah, real. I think he's, he's an extremely honest and heartfelt person. Cool. What I like about him more than, than his patents is, is when I was interviewing him, I asked him, I said, so how put off hmm. and Eric Davis huh? and I think Jack Sarfati huh? said not terribly nice words about your, uh. about your patents. Uh. So, so what do you think? Uh. What do you make of their criticism? And uh. he, he just sat, he sat there and he's like, you know, I think their ideas are worthwhile. And I just, oh. I, I don't know why they don't <laughs> think mine are, but, but people should investigate theirs. Oh. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like one of the greatest stories from the Bible yeah. to me is when Peter, so Jesus was being taken away to be killed. Yeah. So this is like not even nonviolence, like the opposite of nonviolence, like yeah. way more nonviolent than nonviolent. Yes. Yeah. Peter cut off the ear of the person who's taking Jesus to uh -huh. kill him. Uh -huh. And then Jesus is like, don't do that. Uh -huh. And then he not only said, don't do that, he took the ear and healed it. Oh on the on the person who's taking Jesus away to, to kill him. Kill him. Yeah. So Jesus is like, no, no, you love your enemy. 
Like you feed your you feed your family and your enemy before you even feed yourself. Wow. And 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 you wash like on the night that Jesus was going to die. Yeah. In the stories. Yeah. He's washing the feet of his disciples, like doing the most lowliest of tasks. Wow. The night before, and he knew, like in the stories, that he knows that he's going to die the next day. And he's like, no, this is still important. You humble yourself. Wow. Nothing is beneath you. Wow. And and that's just like gets gets me, man. Like if, if I think about that too much, I just start to to well, to tear up. Yeah. And so Salvatore Pius, like that love thy enemy, that's like something that I I hope to be motivated by, and I see that in him, and that's what resonated most with me. That's amazing. That's super cool. I, I love the episode you did with him and Stefan Alexander. Yeah. He's a really cool guy, too. Yeah. I was just speaking of Jesus. This is a, a total tangent, but uh, in the last week and a half, I just spent some time with Randall Carlson, mm -hmm. um, who works with Graham Hancock. He's this sort of geologist, mm -hmm. esotericist. And then uh, Brian Marescu, who wrote this book called The Immortality Key, mm -hmm. um, which is all about these like ancient mystery rituals, these Eleusinian mystery rituals that took mm -hmm. place in Greece and Socrates, Pythagoras, Aristotle, Plato, they all uh -huh. went through these things. Uh -huh. And both of them agree. This is kind of a heretical belief. Yeah. They think that Jesus never died. Yeah. And that if you read the text, Pilate, who was the governor of Rome or of that little contingency yeah. of Rome at the time, uh, poked Jesus's flesh with yeah. the spear and it was to see whether he was dead or not. But they think maybe Jesus was given a sedative and it was sort of either a mystery ritual or he like faked his own death. Mm. And then he was put in a shroud of like resuscitating herbs by this guy, Joseph of Arimathea. Yeah. And then he survived and maybe even had a bloodline like uh, and like into today or yeah, something, yeah. which is really yeah, fascinating. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> heretical. Yeah. It's heretical, right? Yeah. Um, yeah so I don't, I, I don't know, but <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who knows? Yeah. yeah. Do you, are you interested at all in the Bible or, or anything? I'm, I'm super interested. Yes. Yes. In the Bible, but not just the Bible. Mm. I don't discount religion. Like I used to be this inexorable, uncompromising atheist yeah. from eight years old yeah. up until mm -hmm. a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was, I used to be a fan of like, you know, the four horsemen, uh, yeah. Daniel Dennett, right. um, Sam Harris, Christopher Hitchens, who was the fourth and the fourth was horseman and uh dawkins of course mm. uh and they were just you know like uh, yeah, and I loved watching the, god, that. the god delusion yeah. and god is not great and you know all that stuff yeah it was great mm. and uh and then i started to realize i don't know i just think there's so much weirdness that we can't explain to the world and even through a physics lens like i'm interested in the anthropic principle and sort of the goldilocks environment that we live in and to me that signals possible intelligent design mm -hmm. and anomalies in evolution as well yeah. and so i don't know whether that's god god to me is sort of a placeholder term but mm. something mystical and intelligent have you heard of dembski no so dembski i uh, have i would like to look through this and by the way me saying that i'm no longer this inexorable atheist mm. doesn't mean that I'm now this devout religious person. Mm. It just means I don't deride the religious and I investigate and take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Dembski has an argument based in math, which I would like to go through much like, Don, like Donald Hoffman's, yeah. which Stephen Meyer, who's a proponent of yeah. intelligent design uses, yeah. Yeah. which says, I think it says something like the search space of DNA or of the search space of evolution is too vast to have outputted this complexity Correct. this fast yeah. something yeah. like that totally but he uses something called the no free lunch theorem mm. or no free lunch theorems and that is by david walpart who was a guest on tope mm. and david walpart has this whole article saying like dembski misused my arguments and uh. and he also used them in words and he's like you need to make it mathematically precise and there are two types of arguments one where it's like art and literature and and religious and so on. And that's a word type argument. And then there's like the domain of the specifically defined, which is mathematical. And there are only few results in the specifically defined. And some of them are like Gödel's incompleteness theorem. Uh -huh. and, and the no free lunch theorems, those are limiting theorems or uh -huh. no go theorems, but they're extremely powerful because they're precise. And he's uh -huh. like, his is in the just words arguments, which means you can't tell if it's true or not true. You uh -huh. can't even make a decision. Right. That's what Walpart says. So I want to get Walpart to talk with Dembski on the channel. And oh, just, like, interesting. Hash it out. Interesting. 
So yeah, true. Just words. It's like not even wrong or yeah, something. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. If you enjoyed that clip, then the full podcast is out right now. You can click around here. Enjoy. Subscribe to Theories of Everything to get notified of upcoming podcasts as there are new full-length podcasts every week on the topics of mathematics, physics, consciousness, free will, and AI.